Hello, I'm <laughs> Phil Wang. Um, uh, last, it's good to be back. Last time I was here, I hosted, so I guess that went well. Professor Hannah Fry in the news this week. As he plums the depths of reality TV, Matt Hancock's triumph on Celebrity Does My Head Fit In There proves to be a hollow victory. <laughs> <laughs> As the daily regime of exercise begins, there are complaints of cruelty at Battersea Dogs Home. <laughs> And as Taylor Swift announces new dates at Wembley, there's already high demand for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian and, amazingly, another mathematician. Really? He doesn't half look like one. Please welcome <laughs> Phil Wang. <laughs> Paul's team tonight is a presenter whose TV career began with the phrase, I'll take one from the top, two from the middle, and two from the bottom. It's like Keir Starmer picking out free shoes. Please <laughs> welcome <laughs> Carol Vorderman. <laughs> OK, we're going to begin with the bigger news stories of this week. Ian and Phil, have a little look at this. Right, that's the frozen cabinet. A few pensioners in there. <laughs> <laughs> Live footage from the Treasury. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing left. Oh, it's a machine. It's Labour's new chief of staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the budget. It is the budget. We're still waiting for it. Yes, we are. Right, there we go. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want some speculation? Go on. Well, I reckon there's going to be a tax increase. They have got this quite big black hole to fill, and a black hole that's got bigger. Do you know how big it is now? It's now 40 billion. It is. It was 22 billion, Absolutely. which is a percentage rise of... Well, almost double. <laughs> wow. She's still got it. <laughs> You're absolutely right, though. But the government have leaked a lot of scare stories about how they're going to raise another £22 billion. What is the latest tax rise that they've refused to rule out? The employer's national insurance rise. Yes. And they've said, look, it looks in the manifesto as, as though we said we won't raise national insurance. But it turns out we said we won't increase employees national insurance, mm. but we will increase employers. Mm. So the difference of a single letter means they weren't lying. But you said the difference of one letter, you know, that's the difference between uniformed police officers and uninformed police officers. <laughs> 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 one letter. OK, what were the government pinning their hopes on to inject more money into the economy this week? They found a new way of defining what debt is. Mm -hmm. And it's brilliant, cos it actually means that you don't owe what you think. Not the answer I wanted. Oh, sorry. Different answer. Not okay. the non-doms. Not the non-doms. The private investment summit. That was the... Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Look, yes. I want the answer I've got down on the card. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Professor. <laughs> Thank you. Um... <laughs> you think you might get a little latitude round the answer? Oh, no. <laughs> no. You're thinking of geography there. <laughs> <laughs> Different subject altogether. Uh, so, yes. they've uh, hosted a big uh, investment summit at the Guildhall in London this week. Yes, and they um, got lots of investors in, including P&O. They did. Yeah. They um, did. Which is a bit embarrassing. Why so? Well, because when they were in opposition, they said P&O are a disgrace, and they sack hundreds of workers and then rehire people on agency fees, and they are abominable. But now they're in government, they've said, hello! <laughs> Aussie Care wants a free cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the Bahamas, baby! <laughs> 
to be specific, this is Transport Secretary Louise Haig, yes. who described P&O Ferries as a cowboy operator and a rogue outfit. Yeah, because they've got a terrible employment record. Mm. In 2022, they sacked 800 workers by text message and video link and then immediately rehired cheaper replacements from abroad. So, Phil, take over. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what uh, the government did to try and woo the investors at this? Free biscuits. <laughs> Michelin star meal. I mean, you're close. They did try and woo them with some um, quite delicious delicacies. They served amazing English food, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Greg's? <laughs> Still on Labour then. Yeah, but they um, did have Elton John. They did have Elton John. He sang Candle in the Wind about Liz Truss. It was very moving. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> what is Health Secretary Wes Streeting's radical plan to save the NHS? He's going to give people a Zempic jabs mm -hmm. or, you know, weight, weight loss drugs yeah. to get them back to work. Yeah. So, you know, Wes Streeting is trying to fight inflation too. <laughs> The theory is everyone is overweight in the entire country, so you give everyone this jab, they become slim, they go to work, growth, productivity, we become the richest nation on earth, and thin. Mm. Mm. What it's could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you know they're um, advertising as Empic in the States now quite heavily. Do you know what classic British pop song they're using to advertise it? Oh, I'm too sexy for myself. <laughs> No. Okay, give us a clue. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll just I'll play you the clip. Okay? okay, yeah. Looking to get back in your type 2 diabetes zone? Once weekly Ozempic can help. Oh, 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 Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> Did that ad say, are you trying to get back into type 2 diabetes? <laughs> Is that the state of the health of Americans? Are they trying to get back to diabetes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an improvement. <laughs> um, anyone here taking Ozempic? What are you trying to say? <laughs> um, Do you think this isn't just exercise and healthy eating? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only problem is, is that as soon as you come off the Ozempic, all of the weight immediately just goes back on again. So, uh, nice mm. plan. Well, flu jab for winter, Ozempic for summer. <laughs> <laughs> How did the government contrive to squander £150,000 in taxpayers' money in August this year? Well, I think squander is, is presuming you disapprove. This is the swift cavalcade. Do you not disapprove? Well, I mean, she bought a £1 billion worth of straightforward benefit to the UK economy mm. by her series of concerts. So I think, I think 150000 isn't bad no. as a deal. I mean, I don't want to come over all swifty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we spend millions policing football matches every mm. weekend. I've never heard of a Taylor Swift fan punching a police horse. Mm. <laughs> Quite often it's the other way round. <laughs> Do you know what status she was given for all of this? It was like VVIP. It was VVIP. Um, this is reserved for members of the royal family, except for Harry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what has Labour MP Patrick Hurley begun a campaign for? It's Freddo's. It's Freddo's. Freddo's? It's Freddo's. <laughs> They've been getting smaller and smaller. They absolutely have. Is he saying, make Freddo's big again? <laughs> <laughs> what are they? What are they? <laughs> As the packet illustrates, they're frogs covered in chocolate. <laughs> we had Frodo's, they were talking themed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about to reduce the price rather than make them bigger. Mm. According to the eye, the Freddo has been used informally as a measure of inflation. Mm. But did you see that Donald Trump has been using a similar economic model? Tic Tac. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's have a look at this. This is Tic Tacs, right? I don't know if I like the company. I've never met. I have no idea. They're so lucky. They're so, look at all the television. Is like, this is the greatest commercial they ever had. <laughs> but that's what happened. This is inflation. This is Tic Tac. This is Tic. This is inflation. Do <laughs> 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 so you do your lectures like that? Your maths lectures. Like of big. course I do. <laughs> A Freddo. Big. Small. Yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon his advisers said you need to do more on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> he 
This is the budget and the probability that a manifesto promise will be broken. Talking about the money Rachel Reeves hopes to raise with the budget, the Institute for Fiscal Studies said 40 billion is a big number. <laughs> Not to us, eh, Karen? Oh. <laughs> At the investment summit, <laughs> Keir Starmer appeared at a panel event with former Google CEO Eric Schmidt. A hard man to interview. Every time you ask him a question, he gives you 43 million possible answers. <laughs> <laughs> We're streeting this week outlined a stark future for the NHS. Reform or die. Reform or die, also the choice currently facing disillusioned Tories. <laughs> OK, Paul and Carol, you have a look at this. Yes. <laughs> Oh, this is the uh, World Conquer Championship, Championship. Conquer Championships, isn't it? Yes. Uh, there is the now the World Champion. Yeah. Uh, controversial. It's all gone bonkers with the Conquers. <laughs> uh, there is a ridiculous piece of visual imagery. <laughs> so it's a big, big Conquer story. Yes. <laughs> it's a big Conquer story. It is a bit. Uh, of... And he had a steel Conquer in his pocket. Steel Conquer. He's and still Conquer in your pocket. Yeah. I'll just show you a picture of him. There he is, David Jenkins. Yeah. Do you know what his nickname is? David the Cheat King... Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's not called King that. Conquer. King, King Conquer. Conquer. Exactly King right. Conquer. Uh, some people say they've accused him of having a steel Conquer. Mm. Conquer made of metal. Yeah. Mm. Robo Conquer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have a steel Conquer in your pocket? Yeah, exactly. Unless you were going out on a date later on. <laughs> <laughs> We should point out, though, that King Conquer does deny all of these allegations. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So does Baroness Moan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea how the sun put it in the headline? Um, I used the word bonkers earlier. Does that mm, pop up? Uh, it is conquer plonker. Use steel nut to conquer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was King Conquer's defence for having a metal conquer? Luck. It was for luck. It was. A, he was, had no intention of using it. He found it. It fell off a steel tree. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he say he wanted to show it to kids? Yeah. He told BBC News that he had it in his pocket to amuse children, which of course led to a different kind of investigation. <laughs> Do you know what raised suspicions about this? Well, the, the, the effectiveness of his conquer. It smashed the other, the, the other competitors' conquers to smithereens. One opponent told the male that King Conquer had obliterated <gasps> his opponent's nuts in one hit. <laughs> Adding, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> I, was, um, I just... I don't want to brag. Don't brag, no. But 1969... <laughs> That's not a brag. No. <laughs> 1969. Yeah. Two great things happened. Man landed on the moon mm. yeah. first time, and I became the junior conquer champion in real. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's your conquer tips, Carol? Conquer tips. Two minutes vinegar, two minutes in the oven, low heat. Isn't mm. human urine meant to be quite good? Mm. For what? For making the... For making the... <laughs> <laughs> for emptying the That's an aperitif. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There is some advice for finding a good conquer using a farmyard animal. Anyone want to guess what that is? A pig? It is a pig. Do you know what you do with it? Like a <laughs> truffling pig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In The Guardian, my godfather won the championships twice, a conquer champion said, and he used to say that the best conquer was one that had been passed through a pig. Oh. Was well, that a long piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, he's going to chew it up. Well, it depends which end you start with, doesn't it? <laughs> I stand corrected. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> you should see how the pig stands. <laughs> <laughs> Who's now looking into all of these allegations? Do you know? Is it United Nations? <laughs> <laughs> just, just one tiny step down. It's gone to the uh, highest echelon to support the World Conquer Championships organising. Oh, right. Ah. Yeah. Is there a bit of video of him sort of secreting a conquer about his person? There absolutely is a video. Would you like to see it? Yes, yes please. Yeah, oh, yes. This is the phone footage the committee has been examining. Mr Jenkins in the green appears to put one conquer in his pocket, then takes out another from a different pocket and throws it into the crowd. Could the one still in his pocket be made of steel? That piece oh, of shit. Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, the footage has now been passed to the World Conquers Organisation. Um, do you know why they haven't yet made a ruling on, on the cheating? The alleged... No, because Russia and China don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here is committee member Sinjin Burkett to uh, explain the delay on Sky News. And when do you think you might have the conclusion? 
Well, hopefully, hopefully within the next 24 hours or so, when we've uh, got a, got a response from people, because of course some people have gone off to work for the day, so, <laughs> so it's going to take a bit of time. I love his hat. What yeah. dressed like that? <laughs> Guys, do you know what other great sporting event took place this week? No, we don't know. I'm... It's obviously the North American Wife Carrying Championships that took place in May. <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm shocked that neither of you got this. Let's have a little look. And here comes team number two. He was practicing. He's got this technique down for the hurdle. Okay, real quick. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Apparently, it was way different when you put a wife on your back. Maybe a country can have too much money. <laughs> Would you like to guess what the winner gets? Um, a divorce. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually their wife's weight in beer. Um, oh. Here's, here's how they work it out. Guys, when your wife says uh, that she wants you to get a six-pack, that is not what she means. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cheating scandal that's threatening to destroy the good reputation of the World Conquer Championships. The women's competition was won by an American, Kelsey Bornschabach, which, coincidentally, is the closest Joe Biden has come to saying Kemi Badenoch. <laughs> 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 Here is another one of the competitors at this year's World Conquer Championships, and he'll be back on the news on January the 6th, storming the capital if Trump loses again. <laughs> <laughs> and so, to round two, the Venn diagram of news. Oh! Hey, excellent. OK, fingers on buzzer teams. Here is your first one. This, don't we? You do, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't the space shuttle, but it was the starship. Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket program. Did you cry when it came back in? So the ro the heavy rocket booster <laughs> came, came up, and you're watching on the screen like the starship itself going off yes. and accelerating yeah. like to 17,000 miles an hour. Yes. And at the same time, yes. you're watching the heavy booster come back down to Earth. No. And it's got these mechanical arms, oh, they're called much. chopsticks. <laughs> and they go like that, and they go like chopsticks. that. Chopsticks. Woof. And there it is, yes. back where it took off. So it was a total waste of time, then? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually quite remarkable. Have a look at this. things falling perfectly in place, mm -hmm. would you like to see a video of a very lucky woman in India? Yes. Oh. Should I just tell you that everyone was fine, OK? Forward. OK. What? <laughs> 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 Is she actually inside that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a lot more impressive than Elon Musk. Because <laughs> <laughs> the man came out and said, I think it's come from up there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of the Musk thing? It's basically a big recycling project, essentially. So they can reuse these rocket boosters, not just have them fall into the sea, yeah. um, which hopefully will make up for the 700,000 gallons of fuel a second yes. that they have to burn to get up there in the first place. Yeah, I used to have a car like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Elon Musk would invent a rocket that could get his head out of Donald Trump's ass. That, that, I think I'm really working on that, mate. <laughs> In other news, what has a robot in Germany been up to this week? Oh, conduct. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Conducting an orchestra. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yes, it absolutely has. This is uh, a robot conductor with three arms that made its debut at the Dresden Symphonica Orchestra. Here it is. <laughs> Yes. 
It might well, be more impressive if the musicians are actually looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how the robot's going to take over. They're going to bore us all to death. Yeah. <laughs> well, the artistic director of Dresden Symphonica, Marcus Rint, uh, he said that the intention was not to replace human beings, but to perform complex music <laughs> human conductors would find impossible. What, not to mention human listeners? Mm. <laughs> I, I had no idea music was being held back by our shitty human conductor. <laughs> <laughs> and their shitty arms. <laughs> you, mean, you mean the music could have been faster this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> the faster the music is, the better, I find. Yeah. I can't wait <laughs> for a million notes a second. <laughs> Fingers on buzzer teams. Yes, at a recent rally, Trump, instead of uh, talking, he danced and played music for about 40 minutes straight. And uh, people were not disappointed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a little look. There are times when you think artificial intelligence might be better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He dances like a Conservative Member of Parliament, I would say. Do spare a thought for the poor guy standing behind him. <laughs> he's gone grey during this performance. <laughs> also, he said uh, on uh, Wednesday, I think it was, in front of a room full of women, audience of women, he said, I am the father of IVF. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which nobody quite knows what he meant by that. <laughs> He literally said this week, political opponents yes. of his should be um, dealt with by the military. Yes. And their opponents included Democrats. That's the other party. Yes. All opposition, come the election, should be locked up. Yes. And everyone goes, oh, Donald, <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> he told his supporters the other day that they should all come out and vote on January the 5th. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be a good idea, cos that's two months after. <laughs> The actual date. <laughs> this week, Donald Trump also gave uh, an explanation for his uh, rambling style of speaking. Mm -hmm. um, have a look at this. You know, I do a thing called the weave. Yeah. And there are those that are fair that say, this guy is so genius. And then others would say, oh, he rambled. I don't ramble. If I, I start a story, yeah. what you do is you weave things and you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, a weave. Mm. I thought that was what he was wearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when Trump goes on a weave, um, I think he, he, give, he gives away a little bit too much information. Have a look at this. I did three of them today. I did a little one, a little tiny one with a small group, and then I did a really big one. I did a big one, and I did this one, and I'm still raring to go. <laughs> Look at the faces of the people standing behind him. They're in some sort of coma. Mm. <laughs> Despite all of this, Trump does appear to be making gains in the polls. Um, what controversy has Kamala Harris found herself in this week? Oh, it's about a speech of hers contained material from Martin Luther King. Mm. It was about a, a toddler saying, what would you like most? And she says, freedom. And it was the same anecdote. Exactly right. She'd been accused of plagiarising. Oh, dear. She remembered a, an incident mm. which other people have remembered. Mm. Yeah. Before. The, is that her version of I Have a Dream? Yeah. I remembered an incident. <laughs> it doesn't quite, <laughs> doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? In other international news, what yep. is the US government's latest declaration regarding the conflict in the Middle East? It's finally said, can you stop doing this mm -hmm. to Israel? Mm -hmm. And it's been saying it half-heartedly for about a year. Yeah. And uh, saying, you've got to stop that now or we'll do absolutely nothing. Mm. <laughs> and this time... Mm. They've said, we're going to stop arms um, coming in unless you allowed aid into Gaza. And amazingly, that night, 100 trucks rolled mm. straight into northern Gaza. So the Americans could do something, but they haven't. Now, OK, there's obviously been a lot of activity going on uh, at the UN surrounding the Middle East crisis. Yes. Uh, but did you see the president of Haiti making a speech there recently? No. Here it is. <laughs> OK. Respect. Maybe he's very small. We don't know. 
<laughs> this is the news that with just a few weeks to go till the US election, Donald Trump has turned to dance to get his message across, presumably thanks to his new campaign manager, Giovanni from Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh, yes, the, uh, the press have concocted a scandalous idea that a German man should not uh, be managing the English football team, mm -hmm. although nobody made a fuss when a Dutch woman managed the women's European team that won. So Thomas Tuchel has been made manager of the England football team and some people are very angry about it because uh, he's German. But those same people don't seem to have any problem with the ancestry of our royal family, do you? I mean, quite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're right, the reaction to this hasn't exactly been warm. Uh, when, when you say some people, who do you mean? I mean... Oh, obviously, us football fans about? are pretty committed. <laughs> 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 I mean, Phil and I have talked about very little else. <laughs> The only story I saw about this was Nigel Farage said it was a disgrace. Mm. So I knew where I stood. <laughs> 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 Nigel Farage's wife is German. His wife is German, coming over here, stealing our reform leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, Sam Wallace at The Telegraph, he's got very strong views. Um, here is an article that he wrote before Tuchel's appointment. Um, could the FA really shoot for the stars and go for Pep Guardiola as England manager? And then when Tuchel was appointed three days later, he wrote this. Appointment of foreign manager goes against <laughs> everything <laughs> what exists for. <laughs> How have the Germans reacted? Anyone know? Uh, they're sort of pleased. Uh, well, German newspaper Bild said yes. the motherland of football is getting a German dad. <laughs> That the FA said that the appointment of Thomas Tuchel as England manager sent out a very clear signal, yeah, that Pep Guardiola wasn't interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, for many England fans, look, harping on about the Second World War with old hats, yeah. as this tweet here proved. Tuchel, you're the one. <laughs> Churchill bombed your mum. Football's coming home again. <laughs> I don't want to be a pedant, but it'd be grandmother, wouldn't it? It would be grandmother, yes, absolutely. Churchill didn't actually bomb anybody. No. He was at home at the 10 Downing Street, <laughs> where he needed to be. He wasn't flying Lancasters across Germany. No. No, that would have been a strategic error. <laughs> Some other German news this week. German oh, yeah. news, yeah, yeah, great German news, do you, yeah. Do you know what upset opera goers in Stuttgart? It's a crazy opera. Mm -hmm. It's a very controversial opera. It is. It's sexy and it's weird. Oh, it is. People watching Sancta, this is at the Stuttgart Opera House, yes. uh, and they were treated to a performance including copious amounts of blood, live piercing, oh. excrement, unsimulated sexual intercourse, and naked nuns on roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> were the roller skates necessary? <laughs> Being spanked by Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Would you like to see what this looked like? I, I, I think we have to. I, yeah. I think we do, too. <laughs> <laughs> Why has that woman got a barcode on her upper thigh? <laughs> what is unsimulated sexual intercourse? Mm. They want to promise you this is real. Yeah. This is real. Eight shows a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go on the Monday matinee if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what qualities that the show's choreographer was looking for in a dancer? <laughs> Stamina. <laughs> choreographer Florentina Holzinger told The Guardian, good technique in dance to me is not just someone who can do a perfect tendu, but also someone who can urinate on cue. Oh. <laughs> that would ruin the snooker. <laughs> This is the news that the England <laughs> men's football team now has a German manager. The new manager of England has described himself, amongst other things, as a German vegetarian. Oh, that's good. When was the last time a German vegetarian caused us any problems? <laughs> 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 OK, time now for the odd one out round. Paul and Carol, your four are... Yes. ..a yeah. Qantas flight from Sydney to Tokyo, mm -hmm. yeah. Malcolm Kenyatta, the number plate... T-O-25-P-O-T and Judy Dench's parrot. The number plate T-O-25-P-O-T could be regarded as toss pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would guess that Judy Dench's parrot probably swears 
And yep. on the flight, the uh, Sydney to Tokyo yeah. flight, uh -huh. this was where they accidentally uh, showed a rude movie. It was a night at the <laughs> opera, apparently. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so the SH Kenyatta, what's his first name? He's called Malcolm. He was on Question Time. Mm. Was he? And, and he, he got some English slang wrong. They've all been rude apart from him. Ian is basically right here. So it's that uh, they have all been unexpectedly rude, yes. apart from Democrat Malcolm Kenyatta, who tried to be rude and failed. Oh, right. <laughs> so he was appearing on a US election special of Crescent Time, during which an audience member said the word bollocks. And trying to get in on the joke, uh, Malcolm had a go, but he didn't quite get it right. Have a little listen to this. And so this idea that we have not unleashed American energy is, to use the word twice on Question Time, bollocks. It's bollocks. Oh, bollocks. Oh, my God, okay. Oh, Take me to the next show. Yeah. <laughs> He's made a bit of a con of himself there, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. Yeah. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> yeah. Bow, please, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's right. What does the parrot say? The parrot, uh, well... Anyone want to guess? Well, the Yorick skull must indicate that the parrot sort of uh, misrepresents Shakespearean speeches by putting rude words into them. Mm. Uh, it's a bit simpler than that. Yeah. Dame Judy uh, revealed this week that her parrot once turned to her carer Barbara during a home visit and said, you're a slang. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a Polyonius joke from Hamlet. Yeah. But I, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> nice but, why are you thanking them for that stunned silence? <laughs> it was appreciation, I, oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> why has the number plate TO25POT been banned? Tosspot. <laughs> this is one of 250 number plates that are deemed too rude for the road by oh, what the TV 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 Seriously? Yeah. If you're driving behind a car and it's got TO25 pot, are you so triggered by that? I mean, it's just nonsense, isn't it? Toss pot. Oh, well, I'm only making a point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I didn't do maths. <laughs> All right, how did the passengers on that Qantas flight from Sydney to Tokyo get more than they bargained for? They watched um, the... Uh, they saw a dirty film. They yeah. did. Do you know the story? Uh, there's not much of a plot, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh. Man, pizza delivery man knocks at the door. <laughs> so the in-flight entertainment was broken on this plane, so passengers had to vote for a film <laughs> to be shown on every screen on the plane. <laughs> and according to The Guardian, the majority chose the sexually explicit 18-rated Daddy-O. <laughs> which, uh, which one passenger described as 40 minutes of penis and boobs. <laughs> A passenger complained online that it was impossible to pause <laughs> or turn it off. Or, or indeed, <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> um, but after nearly an hour, the crew stopped the film and replaced it with a family-friendly alternative, Fisting Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, how yeah. has a candle in America been causing offence? A penis-shaped candle, presumably. I'll be honest with you, you can keep on guessing, you're not going to get it. OK. Um, it's a winter candle from Bath & Body Works with a snowflake design on it has been criticised for looking more like several members of the Ku Klux Klan. I would have gone with aliens there, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, but when you see Ku Klux Klan, you can't unsee can't it, unsee. can you? <laughs> They have all been unexpectedly rude, apart from Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta, who tried to be rude and failed. An obscene film was accidentally shown to every passenger on a Qantas Airlines flight. According to The Guardian, one traveller said, I have never seen 40 minutes of penis and boobs on a plane before. Obviously, they've never flown Ryanair from Luton to Magaluf. <laughs> <laughs> The obscene film caused problems when the plane came to land and the stewardesses asked everyone to put their tables to an upright position. <laughs> <laughs> to which most of the male passengers said, I can't just now, give me five minutes. <laughs> Ian and Phil, your four are the Dalai Lama, King Charles, Filipino gold medalist Carlos Yulo and the city of Troy. The Trojan horse, it was a gift. But that's oh. not a wooden oh, horse. Oh, accepting gifts. Mm. Oh, yes, this is the big... 
um, horse gate scandal in <laughs> Troy um, <laughs> <laughs> when King Priam was found guilty of mm. taking a free horse. He didn't declare. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't declare it. Not, not at all. <laughs> taking gifts gets you in trouble. Well, not gets you in trouble. It's more. It means you lose the war. <laughs> I think the odd one out is the man bottom left because he was offered a free pair of binoculars but turned it down. <laughs> Um, they have all been given unusual gifts, apart from King Charles, who failed to disclose what gifts he's been given for the last four years. Oh. Scandal. Ah. Yeah. Scandal, no, um, absolutely. Is, uh, and there are people who care about this deeply, apparently. Yeah. Um, there, there is no shortage of financial skullduggery at the palace uh, involving the Saudis and the Qataris. Yeah. Um, and last month, it was revealed that Michael Wynne Parker, a charity trustee for the King's Foundation, was embroiled in a cash for honours scandal. Certainly um, not the first time. No. Um, what is one gift that the King won't be receiving anymore? Happy birthday card from his parents. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know different. <laughs> Happy birthday card from one of his children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't groan at that. Uh, well, apparently, it's a tradition that whenever the monarch visits Jersey, um, they're usually presented with two dead ducks. <laughs> and um, on a recent trip, Charles and Camilla were given duck eggs instead. Well, f future dead ducks. <laughs> <laughs> In other royal news, um, who can't wait to get rid of the royals? Australia, uh -huh. Australia, Australia, oh, yes, exactly. Australia, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's an anti-monarchy campaign group, the Australian Republic Movement, who plan on protesting against the state visit of the King and Queen this week with uh, banners, posters and T-shirts that depict the royals as ageing rockers. Here they are. They look younger than the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what surprising gift did Troy receive? A wooden horse, mm. obviously. It was a wooden horse, stuffed full, of course, of the Greeks' best warriors. Yeah. Um, among the soldiers that were smuggled into Troy, uh, inside the horse, were Antimachus, uh, Diomedes, uh, Edomineus, Leontius and uh, Polypoetes, which, incidentally, is the name of Jacob Rees-Mogg's children. <laughs> 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 um, do you know what, uh, uh, what Joanna Lumley gave the Dalai Lama? A night to remember. <laughs> Um, it was actually a drone. <laughs> Dame Joanna Lumley recently gave a drone to the Dalai Lama. A drone being quite appropriate because she doesn't half bang on about the Gurkhas. <laughs> 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 OK, gymnast Carlos Yulo became the first male Filipino to win Olympic gold medal at the Paris Olympics. Um, how did the government reward him? They gave him a house. They did. Yeah. And 16 ah. million pesos. Um, is that a lot? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were businesses across the Philippines who gave him a hero's welcome by gifting him all sorts of stuff. Here is the, here's the list. We've got a fully furnished two-bedroom <laughs> condo, 100,000 pesos, which is 13,000 pounds in free furniture. You can calculate the rest from there. Yeah. Um, an what? iPhone 16, Ooh. a lifetime supply of macaroni cheese, <laughs> a lifetime supply of ramen, oh. a lifetime supply of cookies from a place called Cookies by the Bucket, <laughs> a lifetime supply of colonoscopies and consultations. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, after all of that, we're just going to come in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they have all been given unusual gifts, apart from King Charles, who has failed to disclose what gifts he's been given for the last four years. Anti-monarchist groups are furious, with one arguing that the royals have form when it comes to blurring the lines between what's theirs to keep and what's an official gift. Like Australia, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna Lumley revealed that the Dalai Lama is fascinated by machinery and is always taking radios apart. I mean, me too especially when Vernon Kay is on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> what does he present? Oh, he's got a Radio 2 show called Vernon Kay. Oh, right. <laughs> they hunted far and wide to find somebody <laughs> that would fit the title of the program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they found a woman called Kay Vernon, but it was close. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication... The Ringing World, the weekly magazine for church bell ringers. And we start with Elton John shocks red carpet by turning up what? With a wife. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is Elton John shocks red carpet by turning up in a necklace made of his own kneecap. Oh. <laughs> what? Here he is. 
I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Next, shock after what caught speeding in Germany? Uh, Joseph Goebbels. <laughs> <laughs> No, you weren't expecting up. that in a topical news quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Eamon Holmes? <laughs> Roller skating nun. Roller skating nun. Uh, it is shock yeah. after Cookie Monster caught speeding in Germany. <laughs> the Cookie Monster was spotted speeding in Dortmund, Germany. Here he is. That's, <laughs> 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 That's a CCTV shot there from a camera, presumably on in... Sesame Strasse. <laughs> Next, the measure of a successful AGM for the Central Council of Church Bell Ringers is what? Having enough cocaine to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Surviving the winter? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the measure of a successful AGM for the Central Council of Church Bell Ringers is if it's over quickly. <laughs> <laughs> One motion to extend the length of term for stewards from six to nine years passed with a clear majority. Oh, to use the technical term. You've got a ringing endorsement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Next, boy in Essex, what with 340 Yorkshire puddings? Breaks the terms of Toby Carvery's all-you-can-eat policy. <laughs> <laughs> it's boy in Essex makes Halloween costume with 340 Yorkshire puddings. Uh, have you got a picture of it? We absolutely do. Here it is. <laughs> no, I just about to see his eye poking out there. Yes. Um, <laughs> next. You can behold what in over 1,400 churches across the world? Quasimodo tribute bands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually, you can behold uh, Big Wilf's bell muffles in over <laughs> <laughs> across the world. <laughs> that's, that's a hard sentence to say, isn't it? It, is. well, it certainly was. I'm surprised yeah. we didn't get that. Yeah, I've, I've been friendly with Big Will for a long time. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. This is an advert from The Ringing World. According to Big Will's advert, they are taking orders for delivery in time for Remembrance Sunday. The reef laying at the cenotaph this year will again be a solemn occasion, as we are reminded that, yes, Liz Truss was once Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 Lastly, Queen Camilla thinks what is dreadfully common? Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it's using a fish knife is dreadfully common. <laughs> Applying makeup in public is also frowned upon. According to one etiquette expert, grooming is a private thing until you get caught and end up on a desert island on Channel 5. <laughs> mm. I noticed you chose the ITV presenter rather than the BBC one. Mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Plethora of people to choose from and all together, isn't there? There are. We could have gone any number of ways. <laughs> yeah. Hugh knows. Mm. <laughs> have I got Hughes for you? <laughs> So, the final scores are Ian and Phil have five, and Paul and Carol have five. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But before we go, there is just time for the caption competition. Tory members, debate the way forward. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that we have a member of the White Moustache Club who should not be a member. <laughs> <laughs> In the run-up to the uh, comeback tour, Ozempic has surprise effects for the sugar babes. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Phil Wang, Paul Merton and Carol Waterman. And I leave you with news that... On a delayed flight to Rome, there is polite applause for one passenger's rendition of Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again. <laughs> As he scans the arrivals at a G8 summit in Washington, Joe Biden mutters, I hope that really boring guy from the UK isn't going to be here. <laughs> and in Devon, one farmer reveals his unusual method for coring a pumpkin. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>